We're going to prove Dilworth's theorem on three slides and a little bit of work on the dot count. So we're going to prove that a post set of width w can be partitioned into w chains, and it's going to be induction on the size of the post set. So what about a one-point post set? Here it is. What is the width of this post set? The maximum size of an antechain. Unless you've been asleep, you know that one element constitutes an antechain. And so pretty clear to me that the biggest size an antechain can have if there's only one point is one. Can I partition this into one chain? Well, once again, a one element set is a chain. So take the element all by itself, that's one chain. So trivially true when the post set size is one. Just for fun, let's do the case when there are two elements in the post set. What does a two element post set look like? There's, and yeah, I liked it. There's two cases, right? It's this or that. It's a two element chain or two element antechain. Agreed? That's, uh, that's all a two element post set can look like. If it looks like this and it's a two element chain, what's the width? One. Can you partition this into one chain? Well, I just did it with my fingers. Okay, if it looks like this, what's the width? Two. Can I partition this into two chains? Yes. Chain, chain. So true for small values. Now you want to prove by induction. You want to assume it's true whenever the size of the post set is at most k. And now you're going to look at a post set of size k plus 1. All right, so now let's look at this notation. For every maximal antechain, doesn't even have to be a maximum, you've got two sets. Down from A, elements less than something in A, and you have up from A, things that are bigger than something from A. And then you always get a partition of the post set into A, union down from A, union up from A. All right, so what this means, if your post set looks like this, being very suggestive with this picture. Now, a maximal antechain looks like this. Now, this picture can only be suggestive because you've already seen concrete examples in which antechains were all over the map. They didn't really look that flat, did they? And so this picture is suggestive. All right, now, take any element which is not in this maximal antechain. Why is it not in the maximal antechain? Because it's comparable with something in the maximal antechain. It's either bigger than something in the antechain or it's less than something in the antechain. Can any element be both? Can any element not in this antechain be bigger than something in the antechain and less than something else? No. Because if you have this element, and it's under this element of the antechain and over this element of the antechain, what's the relationship between that and that? Comparable. And any two elements in the antechain are supposed to be incomparable. So if you look at any element not in the maximal antechain, it's either over something, and these are the up points, up from A, or it's down, it's under something. These are the points in down from A. Anytime you take a maximal antechain, there's a natural partition of the post set 
into the antechain and the points which are up from the antechain and the points which are down from the antechain. Okay?